on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 19 of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is the show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. My name is Brandon. I'm the host of the show, and I'm a software developer and a DJ. Today I have with me Lisa, who will be joining us to talk about lots of fun and interesting things such as yoga, natural health, well-being, nutrition, animals, and all that good well-being stuff. <laughs> Say hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> so this is Lisa's first time ever being on camera and being on a show, so she's quite nervous, just like me. It's only it's only my nineteenth nineteenth time doing this, <laughs> and it still feels a little. A little unnatural for me to start off but we'll ease into it nicely and uh share some fun and exciting stuff with you guys out there watching and out there listening and just in case it's your first time tuning in thank you for tuning in welcome to the show my goal behind the show as i've said in previous episodes is to encourage you out there watching and listening to have um kind of initiate more deeper and meaningful conversations with people in your life and get to know people a little bit more sharing their passions regardless of who they are, where they're from, any differences you have, and just kind of come together over these uh, kind of um, similar passions that you have. And to tie off every show, being a DJ, I do a little mix at the end uh, with some songs that my guest requests and some songs that I like as well, uh, just to kind of tie everything together and end the show on a, a fun, happy note. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So, Lisa, if you want to start us off with maybe uh, a little bit about uh, what you're interested in, maybe what got you interested in some of these things, if you want to start with maybe yoga at the top of the list or whatever, whatever sure. stands out in your mind. Um, I guess it was probably 17 years ago. Um, a friend of mine was doing yoga and she had talked quite a bit about it, so I decided to go explore a class. And since then, I've loved doing it. I've gained a lot of strength, a lot of insight, um, lots of valuable, I guess, life lessons, surprisingly, and just overall body health from doing it. Awesome. But what was the, the thing that kind of clicked in your mind that made you feel like, I want to keep doing this for a really long time, and I really like doing this? I think because it brought together so many aspects, like in... You learn how to, what you learn on the mat that you can carry into the real world and just how to take care of your body, how important movement is, that how flexible your body is reflects a lot on what's on the inside, mm -hmm. being your physical body inside and your mind and all that stuff and how to calm a busy mind and control like anxieties and stresses and just the overall health of doing it there's so such a huge aspect of it cool so 17 years is a long time to be doing anything <laughs> i think <laughs> so it, looking back on how things were maybe before you started yoga in comparison to today what are some of like the biggest changes that you notice in yourself and maybe anything else that's related to that um i think the biggest things i've noticed is just overall like strength like I know people lift weights and they get big muscles and they're strong, but this is more of an internal, like you may not have the six pack, but you have a layer of muscles under that, that you really have to engage to make your muscles work on their own. How, as we get older, our muscles get lazy. They don't do the same things that they're mm -hmm. supposed to do and other muscles take over. Um, just how to control that busy mind when you got 10 million things going through your head and you're trying to f comprehend it all and it just becomes overwhelming. Yoga just kind of brings that natural relax. You can go so stressed out and you walk out of there feeling amazing. Just chill. Yes, calm. chill, calm, and strong. And it's and it's a lot of fun to try new things. Yeah. Even if you fall, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and you've gone on a couple like yoga retreats and stuff too, right? Yes, I actually did a yoga retreat to Nepal, which was incredible it was an extreme culture shock off the start yeah it's not quite what i expected um but seeing how these people lived and doing yoga like in the annapurna mountain range and stuff it was it was incredible to see these people and learn different religion different culture like everything was just 
so different from here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think it was good to learn what we have and take for granted the things they don't have there, like simple electricity. Yeah. And in Nepal, did you find that there's a lot of people who practice yoga there to kind of I think it's everything too, more or? the basis of yoga with the meditation and um, kind of more like Buddhism where they're how they view things is very different from us. It's more it's not so material because they don't have a lot. They don't have like I said, the electricity is. Um, power shed to India so random times during the day you'll have six hours with no power so that determines how you cook determines how you do things your business everything else and they just kind of more go with the flow they're more laid back but they're all happy even though they don't have a lot yeah so whereas here it's more money seems more money conscious than yeah and attaining things whereas there is just being which is what yoga is being in that moment on your mat with yourself the rest of the world doesn't matter you're just in that moment hmm. with your body and your mat and your mind and you just deal with what's then nothing else matters so you're trying to tell me and all my millennial friends that you can be happy without an internet connection you can you can be <laughs> very happy <laughs> just connecting know. yeah yeah, I've done yoga a few times myself, including like hot yoga and even just regular yoga a few times. And I've noticed that after class, I just feel like, I don't know what happened, but I'm just so calm and just, it's like I got hit with a cool splash of water, like inside and everything is just... And you have that break from, you know, the text messages, the, like you said, the internet, the, all that stuff is just, it's a break from it. You're just in that moment. I remember one class I went to. I was just there, I was totally in the moment and everything out, and I literally have never had like this overwhelming feeling of just being so happy, just in that mm -hmm. moment, with yourself, in the room, even though you have all these other people with you, but it was just this feeling of being so happy, like it was just perfect, it was like, it was amazing. And that was just like one particular time, or that yeah, happens quite it's often, happened. or? Um, I've I can only remember the one time it was that much, but I mean, there's a lot of times where you have those moments and you have a lot of fun and the teachers are, you know, the variety of teachers, the variety of classes are really good. Hmm. Helps with all those different things. You need different personalities to bring out different parts of you, I think. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's a really good point too. That I feel like that can even carry over into so many different areas of life. Like you're tested in so many different ways and you won't know yourself truly until you're in certain situations and even just facing different yoga instructors probably brings out different feelings and yeah stuff how and you react to too, different right? things i have one yoga teacher she's amazing she can do all these incredible postures but she always tells us like she wants us to try things and make it fun and learn how to play again like when you were a kid oh. so if you play and you fall she says yeah. when you fall and can get back up and try again it's the same thing. You take that off the mat into your real life. And when things go bad or whatever, it's how you get back up and try again mm -hmm. to do things. But she like, she says the craziest thing. She gets us to do the craziest stuff. And then I have another teacher that's very traditional, mm -hmm. which I like that structure. She's very much about breath work and all that stuff. But she brings a different aspect than the other teacher. Yeah. And my other teachers, one girl, she brings two T-Rexes to class. T-Rexes? Yeah, she, they sit, they're little... Oh, like little toys? Plastic toys, and they sit beside her mat. I have no idea why, that's just She never, like, thing. mentioned it, or... No, anything. she doesn't bring it up. She just sits them by her mat, and... Oh, that's were you ever about thing. to ask, but then when your I classmate to was ask, like, don't ask about the T-Rexes. <laughs> no, I wanted to ask, but she always goes right directly to another class, so I never get a chance to really talk oh, to okay, her. Okay. So I don't know her, she's usually a sub. Huh. for my classes so but it's just interesting that how they each have their own personality and their own view of how to do things right do you find that having the dinosaurs there adds to the class at all it suits her personality it definitely suits her personality she'll drop a swear now and then in class and <laughs> <laughs> t-rexes are known to swear quite a lot from what i know she's about just, she's all, she'll actually makes you do t-rex postures where you make your arms look like t-rex and then oh, she really? makes you do postures with your arms like that and it's just huh. it's her quirky thing right oh. i have another teacher that if you use your hands to move your legs she makes everybody stop and you got to do all these leg exercises where 
you can't use your hands for anything. You have to make your muscles work oh, on their wow. own. That's probably good exercise, though, and, like, good practice because you don't want to be compensating, right? Yeah, because as you get older, like I said, you start to compensate. You use your arms to lift your legs, and you don't use certain muscles, which will eventually affect your joints and every other thing, your yeah. hips and all that. So to learn to engage everything and do it on its own, make those muscles work, that's what they're there for. Cool. So being such a, a proponent of yoga, have you converted anyone you know into the light side of yoga practice? Um, no. I tried to convert your dad, but that was not successful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was more of an interesting Yeah. Oh, so, sorry. I should have mentioned that at the start. For those who don't know, my this is the wife of my father, so my stepmother. <laughs> so you may hear references to my dad uh, um, and him being a funny guy. <laughs> I guess you and I have done yoga, which hopefully it yeah, that was encouraged fun. you to do it. Yeah. Um, I've tried to get my friends, but I think people think, oh, I've never done it before. I'm not very flexible, so I shouldn't go or mm. I can't do it. Whereas yeah. those are the people that should be going. Yeah, exactly. You know, not the people who are double jointed, whatever. Like it's good for everybody. But I think the people who are afraid to go because they're not flexible, that everybody has to start somewhere. And you see that gradual process. And I think mm. that's what makes you want to keep going to see how far you can go, what you can learn to do. Yeah. That, that, that just reminded me of, uh, I'm, I'm listening to a few podcasts myself and they're all about just a wide range of self-improvement topics and stuff. And one of these things, like you just mentioned about the people not being so good at it, they're the ones who need to go the most. And the flip side of that is if you're not good at something and you start, you're going to see like the fastest improvement over someone who's already good and then start because they'll be good, but they're not improving at the same rate as someone who's lower, right? Right. And you see, you start to see the health benefits. When I started, there was so much I couldn't do. And now I've been going 17 years and I think I should be able to do more. But like they say, on any given day, your body is different. Mm -hmm. So yesterday you had great balance. Tomorrow you can't even stand there. You keep falling over. Yeah. But it's that learning how to recognize the stuff going on in your body, reading your body, and listening it to because all the time it's giving you messages. If you don't listen, then you're going to end up with something and that maybe is too late at that point, right? Yeah. And then meditation is usually kind of tied in with the yoga um, class as well, right? Like the whole, like focusing on your breath and yes. things like that. Breath work is like probably one of the main things in yoga always, no matter how hard the posture is, you have to be able to breathe. And when you start holding your breath, most people, when things are struggling or hard, they hold their breath. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's when you need to move back on the posture that you're in or ease out of it to be able to still breathe because that's what to oxygenate your body is the best thing you can do for yourself. Yeah. I think even I hear even in like with Navy SEALs and different kinds of military training programs, they have like that breath practice too to get through the really hard times and stuff and I heard a story where uh I think it was some kind of Navy SEALs training where they have to like go in cold water for some crazy amount of time and focus on their breath and like stay in a circle and see how long they can endure it and then when they're finally done you see like a, a little short walk down the beach there's like kids playing in the same water even though it's like the same temperature and they're just it's all in their mind. I think as we get older, we go more into our minds and it starts to tell us things. There's this guy that I read about. His name is Wim Hof. And he actually, um, I believe, climbed part of Mount Everest in uh, shorts. Oh, wow. And he did a, an experiment with these people where they injected him with a virus or something. And through his breathing technique, he was able to control his autonomic nervous system. Hmm. So he was able to neutralize that virus and not allow it to affect his body. Same with wow. he ran a marathon in the desert yeah, without water or something like that. Oh, and wow. it's all controlled by his breath work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it just goes to show how strong. And if you focus your mind on one thing, because there's like 50,000 or something like that thoughts that go through your head a day. Mm -hmm. So many. And all those things are going through and you're thinking you're jumping usually in the past and in the future mm -hmm. instead of right now when that's all that matters. Yeah. And all those things that your mind is telling you, these stories. One of the girls in my yoga class told me um, an acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. Hmm. 
So when you're scared or you get worked up about something because your mind has told you something, think of, is that really true? Is what my mind telling me actually in this moment happening? Yeah. And if it's not, then why are you worked up about it? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, so yeah. you always have to stop and think because our mind, same when you're in yoga and you're like, oh, this is really hard, it's really hard, I can't. It's not your muscles want to work. That's yeah. what they're there for. Mm -hmm. But it's your mind that's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'm lazy. I don't want, this is too hard. It's just telling you something, but you really can do it. Yeah. It's your mind creating that fear of going into a headstand where it's like, oh, I'm going to fall over. I'm going to smash my face into the floor. It's just, it's this fear. Whereas mm -hmm. you see little kids do all these crazy things. It's because they're just in this moment. There's no fear. There's no stories. They haven't been through all these things that have made up these conditions in our mind. Yeah. They just go and play and have fun and they fall down and they get right back up. Mm. And that kind of ties into what your one teacher says about just trying to play and being a kid again. That's what she says, that we've lost this ability as adults to go play and explore and have adventure and just have that imagination and to try. Mm. We are always fearful of what other people think or what other people are going to say, judgment. Um, what our minds are going to say, nobody may even notice, but your mind is the one that's criticizing you. Yeah, yeah, for so, real. So, yeah. that will affect what you choose to do and how, what you try. Uh, other than other than yoga, do you feel like there's any other things that you do or just, like, uh, scenarios that you find yourself in where you're trying to implement that same mindset of just treating it like a, like having fun with it or, or being a kid on the inside and kind of not having the fear and just being there in the moment? Um, I think there's moments that I have where there's just these moments where you go and you just feel like you need to take it all in. It's hard to tell the moments. It just happens to come where you just stop and be like, I want to take this all in. And those are those memories where you can remember the sound, you can remember the smells, you can, you just stop in that moment and take everything in. And that's what you remember. So the smell triggers, you know, your memories mm. and that's when you stop and yeah, yeah, take yeah. it all in. So I think there's times like that where I do it. Um, with my niece and nephew, them being so young, it's just fun to go play with them and pretend and be a kid. And just, yeah, yeah. You know, because adults are so serious and judgmental and you're always worrying about that. And with them, they just love you for you and just want you to play and imagine and have fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so, the kid's not even going to care, like, even if you, I don't know, so you have, like, a giant ugly mole on your face or something, they'll just yeah, big laugh and play with you anyway. <laughs> They don't care. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to judge you. They just want you to play with them and have fun. Um, but I think I'm still learning on how to apply that in everyday life with people because you do. I think everybody feels that people can, that you're always being judged. Mm. So on what you do, how you look, all those things. And I think that always sticks in the back of my mind somewhat and maybe limits the things that I choose to do or yeah even though you try not to but yeah you, you can't help human, it right? right yeah especially yeah. like just after facing growing up around so many people and they'll say things and you'll see things on tv or see other people do things and you feel this like unspoken pressure to behave a certain way or say certain things but really that's kind of in your mind too really yeah, you're yeah. always trying to be your best self, but a lot of times we end up trying to, I think, copy or emulate other people instead of just enhancing who we really are. Yeah. Being true to who you are. Yeah. And I think, like, say what you will about tons of personalities out there, but the ones who really make the biggest impact, I think a lot of people agree, are, are those who are, like, the most authentic and genuine to themselves, even if they're kind of off-putting or you do like what they say but like like somebody like Oprah she seems really genuine and like spreads the positivity and Ellen the same way and on the, mm -hmm. on the flip side in different directions you have the U.S. president who say what you will but he's true to yes. whoever he is but those people kind of they're they're the most real to themselves or true to their own motives and those are the people who kind of I think make the biggest impact I think one way or another. That's where you're going to attract real people that you have a connection with because when you're just you, you're going to find people who like your quirkiness or your difference, the way that you're different from other people instead of going along with what everybody else likes. Yeah. You're going to attract the people that 
become really close friends because they truly know who you are and they like the way that you are, all with you know, flaws and all. Yeah. Same with a partner, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I found that with, um, even in my earlier uh, podcast episodes, I started, I made, I recorded three uh, before this year, like two years ago. And listening back to them, I kind of cringe because I'm like, um, I'm trying to be so cool and so like energetic and stuff. But, but then like since I started this year, I'm just kind of trying to be myself more and being more relaxed but some people said it's a little bit boring but at least I feel more natural doing it and I feel like it makes for better conversations. I think you're also probably a lot more harsher critic on yourself than most people so if I watched it I may be like that was fine yeah yeah, you know that was you at that time yeah whereas you're like oh my god you know you see pictures of yourself like when I was younger with the neon spandex and stuff you're like oh my god what did I wear but oh yeah at the time (laughs) that was you know you cringe and you judge, but you were having fun. You were enjoying it. So yeah, as long true. as you did that, if you and enjoyed like, it, then who cares? Yeah, I guess so. But I, I don't know if it's necessarily enjoying it or just like not even being aware of it sometimes. Cause like sometimes There's always like, times oh, where we try not to be ourselves. I wish someone would have, would have told me that that shirt looks really stupid or something. <laughs> It's like you want to be told if you have like a piece of lettuce in your teeth, right? That's true. Yeah, that's but imagine true. having that, that, too. that piece of lettuce in your teeth for like five years. <laughs> no one says anything. Well, I'm sure they said something, just not to you. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't help either. No. I would appreciate it if they say that if, would if anyone listening or watching has anything like that they want to say with me, please let me know. Because I, I wouldn't want to look back further down the road and wish that I did something differently too. That's just embarrassing. No, but then, no, you learned how to do it, right? Yeah, fair you enough. You learn what you didn't want to do and what you want to do now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a learning lesson. Yeah. Okay. So, um, moving on to kind of taking these uh, lessons of, uh, I guess, treating yourself really well and knowing what your body has to say and living in the moment and kind of being true to yourself. How do these things, or how does uh, a couple of these other topics tie into that with we have like natural health, nutrition, and kind of like overall well-being. I think yoga kind of brought on more the interest in the natural health. Um, I've been dealing with eczema for a really long time, and I had been to the doctor. He did all these tests that I don't believe were necessary um, and didn't get anywhere with them. Mm. Um, I also went to a dermatologist, and he gave me stuff that only bruised my skin like crazy. And I just got tired of all, you know, I was taking care of myself, the exercise route, but this other stuff was coming up and I couldn't figure out why. And so that's kind of when the well-being and nutrition, learning about how stress, um, in the job that I have, it tends to be a very high stress environment. And I have a lot of trouble dealing with stress because growing up, growing up on a farm in Saskatchewan, I didn't have a lot of stresses. Life was pretty laid back. It was fun. It was... So now being into this and not knowing how to cope with the stresses is a real... Still is a real struggle for me. And that's where I thought, well, if I... I have trouble controlling that, but I can control food. So I started looking into different natural health stuff and like juicing, organic vegetables, uh, what's really in our food, um, humane treatment in animals, how that affects... You know, the meat that's that we get and, like, the chemicals that are sprayed. Like, I had no idea that potatoes are sprayed with stuff in the grocery store to make them not sprout. I had oh, no right. idea there was a chemical put on them. Oh. And we're ingesting all these different chemicals, say, from apples, potatoes, meat, hormones. And, yes, individually tested in small amounts may not have an effect on our bodies. But what happens when you put all that together into mm-hmm. your body and you're consuming a lot of it? Yeah. Then what happens? Yeah. So I decided to look more, so I juice quite a bit. I try to eat organic and humane meat and more vegetables, more of that healthy stuff to try to help with the eczema. Also, when the doctors couldn't help me and stuff, I had, like, stomach issues and went to a doctor. They sent me for a CT scan. I had never had an IV, never been in anything like that before, and it was scary. And to tell me, come back to me and say, oh, well, there's nothing. And I'm like, no, I know there's something. I am have a hard time eating. My stomach hurts. Yeah. I don't feel well. And so I finally just said enough of it. And I went to a naturopath. Mm. 
Mm. And within a week, she had fixed my stomach issues. Oh, wow. And was working to help fix my eczema. So what was the thing that she told you to change or gave you? All I had to do was actually take a probiotic. Oh. From antibiotics that I've taken, it kills the healthy gut bacteria and the environment in your stomach, which when you kill off all those good bacteria, and antibiotics will kill off both, Mm -hmm. then you need to repopulate your stomach because most of our body is bacteria. Right. So you need to repopulate populate it and once you once I did everything just kind of went back to normal yeah everything Mm -hmm. I've never had stomach issues since um she's helped me with so many things I'm so grateful for finding her yeah um so it's just kind of changed my perspective it's almost like the doctors just wanted to fix the symptoms give me whatever pill which then would cause something else and to me that's not that's not addressing the issues you're not helping me yeah so I did. I got very frustrated with that stuff, and I just feel like there's another way to find what the real problem is and deal with the real problem instead of the surface symptoms. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think that's that, that's kind of the consensus of Western medicine as a whole, right? Is just to treat the symptoms and then not to really me. Care it's about all about the, money. Yeah, it feels like it's all about money. I had one doctor because my doctor is a teaching doctor, so I always have students. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple that they walked in with a prescription pad and were ready to write me a prescription, not even knowing what I was there for. Oh. And so I just felt like it worries me that these people are coming into the medical field, not even really caring to find out what is really going on with me. Yeah. You know, because stress is a huge factor that has affected my eczema. Um, Food, I just did a food sensitivity test. Mm -hmm. And... There was so many foods that I thought I cut out the wheat, the dairy, <coughs> excuse me, and a bunch of other stuff. But when I got my food sensitivity test back, it was like total things I never even thought I would be mm-hmm. sensitive to. Did anything surprise you on there? Um, eggs. You can't I, handle eggs? I can't eat eggs right now. Oh, wow. I can't have bananas, which I was eating every day. Oh, wow. I can't eat green beans. Yeah. Um, almonds. Huh. Like, these are things I was eating on a daily basis, but yeah, I avoided yeah. the wheat and the dairy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I do have a bit of sensitivity to dairy, just how my stomach reacts to it. But, right. I mean, that's not a big deal to give that up for me. Yeah. Um, but just learning the different things and that learning that from all the antibiotics I've taken over the years has caused issues within my body, which has caused these sensitivities. Mm. So it's not that I'll never be able to eat eggs again, yeah. but I got to deal with the problem from the antibiotics. Right, right. That I've probably been carrying this issue since I was really young. But the doctors never bothered to check any of that stuff, right? Yeah. So going and figuring that stuff out, it it's just more information on what works for my body because everybody's so different. So how you react to a pill the doctor gives you, I may react differently. And what are the real long-term effects of some of this stuff? Hmm. Mixed with everything else, right? Our environmental factors, the chemicals, the... You know, because now there's... Everything is... Has something on it, right? Yeah. The plastics, the microwaves, everything. So how long ago did you get that assessment done to find out what foods you should avoid? Uh, Actually, just recently, it was probably... Two weeks ago, I got the results from it. Okay. And you've been kind of following it since then? I've been following it. I went off a whole bunch of stuff, and I've been following it, and my eczema is actually clearing up really great. Um, I've also included infrared sauna, hot yoga. Nice. um, All that stuff, and it's made such a huge, more than any of the medication ever. So did you go kind of like with the specific intent of, helping with your eczema or just kind of yes because actually it flared i'm i don't know exactly what made it flare Mm -hmm. um but i had it all over my arms my stomach my back my legs and it had just went crazy and i was so upset like uh, you didn't want people to see your arms you don't Mm -hmm. want so not only was it bothering me Physically, but emotionally and mentally, like you're embarrassed you to go out. About, you know, yeah, when you right. go to yoga three times, four times a week, yeah, you don't want people to look and say, "Oh, do you have a rash or whatever?" Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it's so it was a big thing for me to deal with, and so I decided, well, 
I got to figure out what it is. And my naturopath suggested doing this. And mm-hmm. so just by eliminating stuff and going through things, she's figured it out and it's almost gone. Wow. I guess uh, before we start recording, I asked Lisa if there's any like random advice or cool tips she could share that she feels a lot of people should know. And I think we just kind of stumbled upon this one. Is If anyone listening or watching has eczema, it might be worthwhile to kind of get that naturopath test done to see what you are sensitive to. And maybe that's what's making well, it Well, and worse, I think right? going to the naturopath is beneficial to me. Like, it's not that you can't go to a doctor anymore, but it's work with both sides yeah. of medicine. Work with, you know, you may need medication to control this, but if there's an underlying issue that you can fix so that you don't have to be on this medication forever, mm-hmm. then I think it's worth it to get to the cause, to get rid of it, so it's not something you're just keeping at bay. You yeah. literally get it's not just a bad rid day. of it. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I would rather never have it again Yeah. than keep dealing with flare-ups or whatever else, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And we are, we are currently just past the half an hour mark, so the time mm-hmm. is just flying by in this one. So I think... Uh, at risk of going on too late, I kind of want to jump to a, a lightning round of 50 questions you've never <laughs> been asked before. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll just fire through these and try to answer them as fast as you can. Okay. Uh, if, if you feel like any of them need an explanation, feel free to pause and them. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> they should be fine, though. But uh, no, uh, she's never seen these questions before. I've done them in the previous uh, couple episodes with a guest and for myself, too, so... If you've been watching for a few weeks, you know what to expect. So without further ado, let's jump into it. 50 questions you've never been asked. Are you ready? Okay, ready. Okay. Number one, what is your favorite candle scent? Vanilla. Okay. Number two, what female celebrity do you wish was your sister? Jennifer Aniston. Number three, which male celebrity do you wish was your brother? Matthew McConaughey. (laughs) Uh, number four, how old do you think you'll be, or I guess this doesn't really apply because you've already been married, but how old were you when you got married? I was 35. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember now. <laughs> I was 35. Okay. Number five, do you know a hoarder? Yes. Okay. Can you name them or is it no? You don't I think to. it's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number six, can you do a split? Almost. Oh, okay. Number seven, how old were you when you learned how to ride a bike? I think it was maybe three. Okay, that's pretty good. Eight, how many oceans have you swam in? Oh, my Lord. All of them? I'm gonna, no, I'm going to say maybe two. Okay. Uh, how many countries have you been to? Uh, five. Five? Oh. Uh, ten, is anyone in your family in the army? No. Eleven, what would you name your daughter if you had one? Mackenzie. Twelve. What would you name your son if you had one? Uh, Mason. Thirteen. What's the worst grade you've ever got on a test? Oh. <laughs> I think maybe 45. That's not too bad. 45 percent? 35 maybe? I don't know. Could be worse. Uh, Fourteen. What was your favorite TV show when you were a child? Um, I'd have to say Polka Dot Door. Oh, I know that one. Fifteen, what did you dress up on as Halloween when you were eight? Oh, Lord, it's probably like Snow White or something. Okay, classic. Uh, Sixteen, have you read any of the Harry Potter, Hunger Games, or Twilight series? No. <laughs> Seventeen, would you rather have an American accent or a British accent? A British accent. Okay. Eighteen, did your mother go to college? She did. Oh, for? Nursing. Oh, okay. Nineteen, are your grandparents still married? Both my grandparents were married till the very end. Wow. Uh, 20. Have you ever taken karate lessons? No. Uh, 21. Do you know who Kermit the Frog is? I do. (laughs) (laughs) 22. What's the first amusement park you've been to? Um, North Battleford Fair. Oh, the good old North Battleford Fair. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's a big one. All right. 23. What language besides your native language would you like to be fluent in? Spanish. Spanish. Okay. 24. Do you spell a color as gray with an E or gray with an A? Gray with an E. Okay. 25. Is your father bald? Yes. <laughs> and my brother. Uh, 26. Do you know any triplets? No, I don't. 27. Do you prefer the Titanic or the notebook? The notebook. 28. Have you ever had Indian food? Yes. 29. What's the name of your favorite restaurant? Oh, 
I think it's now Mythos. The oh, Greek yeah. restaurant. Yeah, that was good. That was really good. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, 30. Have you ever been to the Olive Garden? I have. 31. Do you belong to any warehouse stores like Costco? Costco. Okay. 32. Would your parents have named you... Uh, what would your parents have named you if you were the opposite gender? Um... Probably my brother's name, but my mom loved Elvis, so who knows? <laughs> you would have been an Elvis. I'm named after his daughter, so. <laughs> uh, 33. Uh, if you have a nickname, what is it? Uh, when I was a kid, my dad used to call me Saw. Saw? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that takes a different meaning with Lisa. all those. Saw. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Um, 34. Who's your favorite person in the world? Oh, that's hard. I don't think I have one favorite person, but probably... I'm just going to say my family. Everybody in my family. Good answer. Good answer. 35. Would you rather live in a rural area or in the suburbs? Um, I think now in my life, I would like to live in the rural area. Oh. Growing up, going back there? Yeah. 36. Can you whistle? I try, but no. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> 37. Do you sleep with a nightlight? No. 38. Do you eat breakfast every morning? Yes. 39. Do you take any pills or medication daily? No. 40. What medical conditions do you have? Just my eczema. 41. How many times have you been to the hospital? Um, like other than doctor's appointments, I've been to emergency once. Okay. Uh, 42. Have you ever seen Finding Nemo? <laughs> Parts of it. Okay. 43. Where do you buy your jeans? Anywhere I can find a pair that fits. <laughs> 44. What's the last compliment you got? Um... Oh, a friend of mine this morning said she liked my top. Oh, it's a nice top. Thanks. <laughs> uh, 45. Do you usually remember your dreams in the morning? Yes. 46. What flavor of tea do you enjoy? It's called Vitality. Oh. It's my favorite. Fancy. 47. How many pairs of shoes do you currently own? Probably 30, 40. Oh. Okay. 48. What religion would you raise your children to practice if you had any? Um, I would let them choose on their own. Yeah. Uh, 49. How old were you when you found out that Santa wasn't real? Ooh. I don't even remember that. I would say maybe... 10, maybe? I don't... <laughs> 9? I don't know how old you are when you learn Santa's not real. That's not too bad. And then I'm switching out the last question because it's just about Tumblr, which no one seems to have anymore, so... My last question is going to be something that I'm stealing from a different podcast called Addicted to Success. And this guy always asks all his guests this question at the end, which is, uh, I think like, I'm probably going to botch it, but it's something along the lines of, if if you had 30 seconds left on in the world, what would your message be to the world or something like that? Like, what would your last 30 seconds sound like if that's all you had left to? I think for people to spend more time with the people they care about. That's your You're only message. here for yeah. You're only here for a short time, so what would you rather spend it at work or would you rather spend it with people you love and enjoy? It's a good message. Yeah. Awesome. So you made it through the lightning round. Woohoo! In just over seven minutes. Eight, seven yeah, that's pretty good. That wasn't so bad, right? That was a quick no, it was pretty <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. All right, so that brings us almost to the end of episode 19 of the Beyond Bits podcast, where we talk about passions, projects, and playlists. So on that note, we're going to move on to the final topic of the show, which is the playlist. So I at least choose three songs that she likes, and she can tell us a little bit about those today. So what three songs did you choose? The three songs I choose, of course, there's two country songs, being from Saskatchewan. Yeah. Um, Farm Girl. So the first two is Thomas Rhett, T-Shirt, and Die a Happy Man, and of course the classic Guns N' Roses, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Okay. So you have a long history with these songs, or...? Oh, I think I've listened to Guns N' Roses for a long time. Thomas Rhett is more new, but I just, I like the stuff that's in his song, the message that he has. And hmm. So it's a new artist that I really enjoy listening to. I think he's really good. Cool. So these are, are, are I, I've, of course I know Knocking on Heaven's Door, everyone knows Guns N' Roses Knocking on Heaven's Door, but I'm not too familiar with the Thomas Rhett song. So are those kind of like slower ones or faster um, ones? Die a Happy Man, I think is, it's a slower song. It's a little bit more heartfelt, you know, like your country love song. And then T-Shirt is just 
a happy, fun song to dance to. And you can dance to really it with catchy. your t-shirt on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. So uh, me being a DJ, I'm going to put myself to a challenge of mixing these three songs together with three songs of my own choosing that I'll think of after I give these ones a listen. And um, if you're listening to the podcast, you can just listen for a few more minutes and the mix will just start. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to click the next video to see uh, my awesome attempt at mixing these songs. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of today's episode with Lisa. Say bye, Lisa. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.